Hi, and welcome to Conquering Commas, Lesson 3, Introductory Words. This lesson has to do with those small words that appear at the beginnings of sentences that we separate with commas. Here's what we're going to do today. First, we'll briefly review rules number one and two. Then, discuss introductory words and phrases. What exactly are they? Third, it's all about clarity with introductory words. Commas are all about making sentences more clear. We help make a sentence make sense when we add a comma, and that's absolutely true for this rule. Lastly, we'll have a quick review. Rule number one says that in a series, you put commas between each part, including that Oxford comma before the coordinating conjunction. In rule number two, with dates and addresses, you put commas between each part. You're getting the idea. They're fairly connected. What is an introductory word or phrase? Well, it's any word or phrase that appears at the beginning of a sentence that's separate from the sentence itself. It's separate from that independent clause. It's often adverbial. Let me give you an example. Powerfully, he gripped the barbell. The word powerfully is an introductory word. It is acting in an adverbial manner um, because it actually is an adverb. If you look at this sentence, you can see if you eliminated the word powerfully, the sentence still makes the same kind of sense. He gripped the barbell. We just don't have that extra added information that the word powerfully gives us. Here are some typical introductory words and phrases. Yes and no, first, second, standalone adverbs, exclamatory words. Obviously, there are some I haven't included here on this list. I'm sure you can use your imagination and transition phrases, like for example, or by the way. Let's look at another example. And here's a kitten. Yes, comma, I want a kitten. Yes, comma, I know I'm allergic to kittens. No, comma, I'm not always logical. You can eliminate the yeses and the no, and the sentences still make the same sense, although perhaps they're not quite the same in the way they convey that information. Testing for an introductory word or phrase is actually a fairly small matter. If you eliminate that introductory word or phrase, the sentence still means the same thing. The introductory portion is just a useful transition word or phrase. Here's another way for you to see what I mean. For example, my exercise obsessed mother enters five bike races a year. We can eliminate the for example, and the sentence still makes the same kind of sense. My exercise obsessed mother enters five bike races a year, but for example does serve as a super useful transition. Let's face it, commas are really all about clarity. A comma can create meaning itself within a sentence. Look at these two sentences. In the first, we have an introductory word. No, I don't know how to ride a bike. You need that comma, and you can tell that if you eliminated no, the sentence still means the same thing, I don't know how to ride a bike. If you look at the second sentence, you can see that the meaning is very different. No is the answer I always give when someone asks if I want to go biking. You can't eliminate the word no, you can't have the sentence that says is the answer I always give when someone asks if I want to go biking, that doesn't make any sense. So you can't put a comma in there, it wouldn't work at all. Here's a quick review of today's lesson. Make sure that you use a comma to separate an introductory word or phrase from the rest of the sentence, and then test to see if it's an introductory word by eliminating that word or that phrase. If the sentence still makes sense, the beginning is introductory and it needs a comma. If it doesn't make sense at all, you don't need that comma. I hope you're a little closer to conquering commas. Thanks for watching lesson three.